Hey guys, Mr. Wimp here. Um, today we're going to be learning about analog and digital signals, how they work, and how you calculate them out. So what I've got up here, I've got an analog signal, and I also have a digital signal. Now you can clearly see that there are some differences between the two. Um, basically a digital signal is a, a nice square wave, and an analog signal has this nice sine wave where it's, it's nice and smooth and curvy. Okay. So there's a couple areas that we want to point out to, to talk about these two um, to distinguish the, the difference between them. So first of all, on an analog signal, you've got this nice kind of flowy uh, sine wave, and it can drop up and down. And, and basically what makes this analog is that at any given point on this curve, it could be at different um, positions, so different levels of voltage. So we just have an oscilloscope. We just have voltage coming through. Um, the, so analog signal has varying uh, signal strength. Oops. Okay, and that's what that kind of curvy symbol is there. So if this is zero volts, and this is five volts right there, Basically, this can be anywhere in between there, so we have varying signal strength. Whereas, on a digital signal, you'll notice that this thing basically gets to a certain point and drops straight down to zero. So if this is zero and this is five volts, it's either five volts or zero volts. So what you could kind of say about this is that it's always on or always off. So it's always on or always, oops, it doesn't like A's, or always off, okay? So at zero, it's off. Now, it could be below off. I mean, this could be zero down here, and this is a big drop. But basically, you have this kind of rectangular shape, and that is the digital signal, okay? If we go back to an analog signal, um, there are some commonalities between these. So what you're going to see in multi-sim is when you hook up an oscilloscope, you're going to see something like this. And you have some different areas in here. You have your scale, and this is the X position, okay, and this is the Y position. And you can see in the scale for the X position, I have 200 nanoseconds per division. So 200 uh, nanoseconds per division. That means that each division in the X direction is 200 nanoseconds. And for my Y position here, I have 5 volts per division. So basically, I'm looking at like 7 volts here. So in the y direction, I have 5 volts, 10 volts, 15 volts, so on and so forth. Okay, and that's for the different channels. We also have the same thing going on over here. We have 500, uh, looks like a millisecond per division in the x position. Okay, so each one of these divisions is 500 milliseconds. So we have 1,000 milliseconds or a... I guess a second. That's a, a second right there. Or excuse me, that's the Y position. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Um, X is going this way, so we have milliseconds going this way. And then the Y position, sorry about that, we have a 1 volt per division. So each one of these is 1 volt. So this is actually not 5 volts, but rather 2 volts, according to our oscilloscope. Okay, so we're going to use multisim to figure that out. And there's some points on here that we're going to need to know. So basically, if we look at how to calculate signals, there's some different pieces that we need. I'm going to use a little bit different color here. I like, I don't know, I'm feeling green right now. Okay, so there's some, some terms that we need. One is amplitude. Okay, amplitude is basically um, the height of your peak. So like this time or this bit right here to this bit right here, we go there, we go there, that is our amplitude. Okay, that's the height of your peak. Now we also have um, what's called a period. So let's see, the amplitude is uh, uh, for a digital signal will always be five. So a digital. five volts. Um, it's also the height of the curve.
Okay, so it's the height of the curve. Excuse my writing here. Um, software doesn't like it too much. But that's our amplitude. The period is basically the time it takes to go from one phase to another. So in our example here, this is in a this clock is it's ticking up. Okay, so we've got an upt uptick. We're going from zero volts to five volts. The next time it goes from zero volts to five volts is going to be our period. So basically from here to here. That is our period. Okay? So it has to be the same thing. So it's going up, it's going up. If we went from here to here, that's not it. So our wave has to go up for a time and down for a time. So this whole little chunk right here is the period. So it's the time for the signal to repeat. Signal to repeat. Okay, so the time it takes to repeat is the period. Now let's choose a different color here. We'll go to, what do you want, blue? Let's do blue. So after the period, um, we've got these two sections here. And we have, whoops, I pressed the button. We have a little section here uh, that is the time high, which is uh, time high, and we have time low. Okay. Actually, I, let me see here. I wrote that incorrectly. Using our proper scripting, time is written like this. Lowercase t, and that's time high. And we have time low. So basically our signal went down to low, and how long is it low for? And how long is it high for? Okay, so that's those guys there. Okay, time high, time low. Um, the rising edge of the clock is this guy right here. This is a rising edge. And it's called a rising edge because that's where the voltage is going from 0 to 5. And then where do you think the falling edge is going to be? Probably right here. So falling Falling edge right there. Okay, so we have falling edge, rising edge, time high, time low. Period is the full signal. Amplitude is the height of the signal. Okay. So, and period is measured in capital T. So it's kind of a unit of time, but not the same as the lowercase t. So this is uh, time and time. Okay. I don't know why it keeps doing that. So there's a couple other things that we have to solve for. Um, the other two is frequency, and frequency is basically the number of times it happens per second. Number of times okay, number of times per second. And to calculate frequency, frequency is F. F is equal to 1 over T, and T was the period. So 1 over T, 1 over the period, uh, and it's measured in hertz. Okay? And then the last thing you'll have to calculate on these uh, digital and analog signals is what's called a duty cycle. And the duty cycle is basically um, the ratio of the time high to time to the total period. So basically, the duty cycle, so D, DC is equal to um, time high over the period, which is capital T, times 100%. Okay? So that's all there really is to know about it. Um, You'll have the sheet that we'll work on uh, in class, and it will involve doing some of these hand calculations. In fact, I think it'll be posted online. And then we're also going to be able to calculate and find some of these numbers using multisim on the computer itself. So um, that should be it for analog and digital signals. We'll see you next time.